Okay, so welcome everyone. So today we are uh, we are on the week seven uh, of prayers and meditations by the mother, and the the talk that we have uh, and the prayer that we have is August two nineteen thirty in the talk by Dr. Amit Pandey. I think you may have uh, gone through. So let us first start with reflections. If anyone is ready. Sharing our reflections on the prayer and on the talk. Okay, I'll go, Monica. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this is very, very, very much resonated with me. Actually, mm. <laughs> this prayer because always this posting would uh, linger in me. Why the outer circumstances are like this? And <laughs> also, I know very well there are so many favorable circumstances which is really favorable to pursue the path, mm. but uh, which are not favorable only will become enlarged sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it shows itself as if you have very big uh, hurdle. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, that time, uh, very low level, I, will, I used to sing, but thankfully, again and again, I can come, come out by the yeah. grace of mother yeah. and rise up again. This is the thing, actually. Yes. And also that uh, serving the divine also, no? He, uh, Alugda's uh, thing is very new. I When I heard his talk, I felt it is very wonderful, no? Actually, even uh, sitting at a place like a flower, you can spread the divine influence. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is yes. very wonderful. Even eating itself is a divine service, he told, no? Actually, yeah. if you eat with conscious, yeah, thing. And also that remind me when uh, Sherbindo also uh, left all the his political activities and came to Pondicherry and sat, uh, everyone criticized, you know, for uh, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that also it reminded me actually. And uh, other things um, I, f I found then, what is the best means of serving thee? That itself is a prayer, I feel, actually. Mm -hmm. And also without any preferences, that also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, I mean, uh, deep, these two things are, actually. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then um, yeah, before that, you should follow that harmony, love and peace. Yeah. And everything, yeah. <laughs> everything is wonderful. This prayer really... Then he talked about that suppleness, no? About suppleness that uh, is indispensable for uh, supramental mm. yoga, yeah. yeah. That also, yeah. So, uh, even during the service also, with only with calm you should do, otherwise you will serve the ego only, he told, no? Mm. Uh, yeah. That point also, I really... I mean, thoughtful. These are things. These things yeah. are actually. Yeah. 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 These are the things. Thank okay. you, Monica. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Who would like to go next? Monica, the main two things which resonated with me were. Yeah. Suppleness. Mm utmost suppleness and total calm and peace in everything, mm. in every thought, in everything we do whilst being alive. Mm. If we achieve these two, our mm. aspiration will reach somewhere. Because yeah. somewhere we lose our calm, somewhere I think the vital comes in between. Or if, if we really try it is true the way they this uh, um, alokta describes that automatically those similar people flock towards you you give out those vibrations and mm. it, it mm. automatically you attract those same uh, pe uh, people around you with the with similar vibes and calmness or on the other hand if you're vulnerable asuric forces come it's only a matter again of training ourselves. Tough yes, training. Yes. 
but we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Especially yes, suppleness, yes. where I, which even when uh, Sri speaks of surrender, I was mm. just reading mm. two days ago, when he speaks of surrender, he says the most important factor in surrender, total surrender yeah. to me is suppleness. You have to be plastic. Yeah. If you achieve yeah. that, you achieve your surrender. So that's what it struck me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, who would like to go next? I can do. Yeah. So, uh, again, a lot of things of, uh, there that I resonated with and I'll just go over them. So, the first thing, like uh, the way the prayer starts, like outer circumstances are a clumsy way of expressing our inner consciousness. I found it really beautiful. You know, we often find ourselves stuck in things. You know, the same people say, Ki bar bar yahi hota hai and everything. So, somehow how everything is related. You know, it's like, say, you have a house and you close the main gate very loudly or if the wind, you know, it closes, it shuts it, shuts it. So, pura ghar kind of, you know, all doors and windows, they kind of vibrate. And, but we don't, like, you know, usme we feel okay. But when we say that how things transfer, it's hard for us to ta totally take it in. So, it was really nice. And then our different parts come out in contact with the world with different people. It's like, you know, how I think I'm one, but when I actually see, I see I am many. And how it said that and different me interacts with different people. Like, uh, so again, very beautifully put. Uh, then the person may just be taking mother's name. So this, again, I just want to say that this is like something that's like really powerful and strong and it's like when I find myself especially when I find myself not be able to do anything like and when I do this like I feel that I have done a lot like around two three days back I had some cousins over and I really wanted to you know talk to them and just I don't know like find some kind of connection or just communicate something but the resistance or I don't know like there were four of them and one of me it was so strong, so strong. And after like four or five minutes only, I was just like just sitting there listening to what they had to say, but just chanting the mother's name because it was, I don't know, not okay, okay. I mean, if this is what I can do right now, it seemed enough. And uh, and after that, it's if you destroy... Yeah, uh, Taru, Taru mm -hmm. would you just repeat this uh, cousin part? Because I think I, by mistake, I just pressed on stop recording button. So just share uh, what you had to share regarding the cousins over at your place. Yeah, I was saying that uh, about two, three days back, I had some cousins that were visiting and uh, they have a diff very different thinking pattern. And for about, you know, some months I've been trying to wanting to meet them and trying to, you know, kind of forming some kind of connection. Mm. But when I was actually in front of them, the resistance in them was so strong and it was like it was painful you know how like if a simple thing how it can how beautifully it can be taken and if one takes it in a very negative way it feels a bit sad right i wish yeah. you could see it that way too so all i and like in about four to five minutes i just you know kind of started just sitting there and saying mother's name internally yeah. and listening to what they were saying or not but like i was in the same room yeah. Because I felt helpless, like I felt that nothing I could do mm. could kind of help me in kind of that communication. So I felt then that the most powerful thing that I can do, like mm. it was more of a dawning, right? Like, and you know, it's like if whenever the situation feels helpless, this comes and it's sad that you have to wait for helplessness to yeah. see it so often. Yes. But it's, it's, it's just... It's like, you know, dupte ko tinke ka sahara kind. Or tinke ka bhi nahi, puri ship ka. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Just like, not just, but taking me. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, that line that if you destroy the outer form, 
the consciousness will come up this kind of really you know made me wonder jaise jo itne you know we talk about avatar avatars and all you know how when kind of like the way it shown in the serials and movies is like just killing the outer form right so that was very interesting that one can only perceive what one can perceive they never kind of show how the consciousness has changed from mm. inside i mean exactly. i'm so but that one never is able to grasp usually so this was again difficult uh, not difficult interesting and after this that voice releases in us an energy of truth that works over a period of time again this was really beautiful that it like you know it doesn't make itself it's not loud it's not like you know comes with bells and whistles it's just a dawning so it was like quite visual the way it was said and this thing is often repeated but i every time i like it because it gives a lot of light that how harmony unity peace light and sense of ease are you know the signs of divine anything or everything that once you reach like feel this and division discord disorder confusion darkness unconsciousness are the indications of undivine after that yeah see how very little all outer circumstances matter like how strongly mm. this has been shared and you know this reminded me that when we were starting with the harmony circles like before sleeping you know i had prayed to ma that uh, you know i don't know what topic to start with mm. so i had this kind of a dream and it was like you know i it was like a, from my body a web is coming out like out of a spider and this sentence that we are bigger than our circumstances mm. like big you know one one word coming out like web from my body i saw that visual so when i saw this it I, again you know just took me right back where i was feeling that ke, how it was coming it kept on coming you know again and again and repeated thing ke, we are bigger than our circumstances we are bigger than our circumstances so that it yeah. sticks Yeah. So that was the first topic of the harmony circle yeah. and then after that why strive and strain so to release thy own conception of truth it's really funny how we do it right like uh, you know i had a i don't know i i don't want to use the word pleasure but <laughs> chance to attend some discourse with the shankracharyas you know the four shankracharyas in vrindavan once and the way they were talking and what they were talking you know like about killing and protecting in the name of dharma and truth ke maar denge kaat denge you know we won't let anybody say anything about hinduism it just like it was like my eyes popped out kind of yeah. <laughs> out of yeah. the socket that really like is this i mean you know am i actually listening to this like how can a shankracharya <laughs> be saying this Yeah. so again you know how it again maya is sitting at every level ke jahan pe ho wahan ka trap it's ready to give you right ke totally and then it feels so sacred right all the people listening to them were like yes yes you know kind ki we are the protectors of hinduism but it's funny if you like yeah. it you know kabir yeah. says ban me lut kya munijan nanga does de mamta ulta tanga again that attachment to our own thought patterns and ideas and views yeah. that rigidity after that again uh, uh, what abhi just people were saying na ki we most supple josna ji i think said mm. we most supple and more trusting so again the word supple mm. and you know another thing i wanted to share it's very strange but before this before reading i don't know why but somehow the word plastic i mm. took it as very rigid you know it was like elastic and plastic plastic is something which one set it's not easy to change right but here mm. we use about plastic as plasticity and the plasticity. ability to t- yeah. yeah so that was very funny that how i just saw plastic and saw that that was a solid and mm. never took it to be anything else and then again everything is relative that form again it comes you know it knocks at you again and again and uh, yes this was very beautiful only duty our only duty is not to let oneself be troubled by anything kind jaise bhai jo hai na koi bhi cheez if man ka bhar bane if anything is kind of 
on your you know anything sacred or not mm. if it's sitting on your head then it's not worth it yeah and uh, this thing also when we are complaining grudging letting all we are letting all kind of adverse forces enter into us like i'm reading a book on the hidden forces so this thing again i'm seeing you know how they say that if you want to attract peace call peace if you want to be happy you know kind of th- do things that make you happy like you have to have a bit of it for more of it to descend mm. so similarly as soon as we you know do any say anything negative complaining or grudging like in this case like and it's surprising how we can't see it more clearly and it took so long i don't know for even like in general for us to see it to torment oneself about doing the right thing causes as as much harm as a bad will so again consistence with the above and uh, yeah and that was also very good this doing good you know our own understanding of doing good yeah. kind of hame bahut bar le doobne ka wo ho sakta hai and this is different from dharma and the truth and i think that is why the vedantic principles of neeti neeti na ke truth not understanding we can't understand but the falls we can see yeah. and that is like the main way or maybe the only way to reach the truth and uh, this conflict fathers our universe this was very interesting for me to read that through conflicts and uh, i don't know what the word was we end up arriving at a higher discords maybe we end up arriving at a higher harmony like how we always see you know like pain and suffering negative conflict chaos negative but how it creates the ground for us to reach a better place kind so it was again very beautiful and and one last thing i think this was a bit funny how mother also says the only thing only to ask the o oh, sublime master to give me stand like you know how we always want things to stick so one of the sentences i don't have the prayer in front of me i don't think i wrote the right thing i would want that this should not go i mean obviously mm. we have to aspire yeah. but being her also wanting to hold on i mean we yeah. all have to. yeah so that i just found to be very sweet yeah that's it from me thank you thank you so let us begin again this outer circumstances and inner state you know um, and it is only to be said to those of us because we live in separation we live as there is a separate person called me and then there is the rest of the world so one has to use the word interconnected right because interconnection has to be used only when first we see that they are not connected for example imagine that there is a vast space and in space there are five buildings so i can use the word that the space in the buildings the space occupied in uh, by those four buildings is interconnected space but if a tsunami comes and takes away all the buildings we will see that the space is forever one there is no interconnection really there is only oneness right so th- these words dualistic words have to be used only because we live in dualism these big, so th- for the ego to understand for a separate self to understand interconnection has to be used i cannot say it is one because it it will not be understandable so the words that are used are that outer circumstances those which are out of your body because you think yourself to be the body that's why this this has to be used outer circumstances and your inner state are interconnected but actually if we know ourselves truly as who we are beyond the layers of ignorance that vast aware presence that vast witnessing presence there is actually no interconnection there is only a oneness a vast continuity that goes on throughout the manifestation right so this is what i wanted to start with that uh, when it is said that all the difficulties mother says all the difficulties lie inside you not outside 
what is mother trying to say mother is exactly hinting us towards this truth that you who you truly are is one with the whole of the manifestation the whole of creation there is only one space and in that space separate buildings are being built up so buildings can be called as bodies billions and gazillions of individuals and that vast space is our consciousness that oneness that we share with each other that vast knowing self aware presence that is only one but for the ego for the one who considers himself as the body mind it becomes then important to use that outer difficulties and internal difficulties are one you know because i consider myself to be the body so this is what i wanted to start with and then you know when alokda shares that outer circumstances are a clumsy way of expressing our inner consciousness and it just tells us where do we have to make a progress for example you may have heard many a times these quotes that world is a mirror of you it whatever situations you are facing in life they are a reflection of you now more often what happens with us is going to just directly the root of it we feel abandoned by other people in life we feel that we have not been taken care by them we feel that why nobody cares about me why i am not getting love from those people right so there is an abandonment feeling of abandonment by the world you know i feel lonely because there is no one who really can care or look after me now how is this a mirror this is a mirror because i have actually abandoned my own truth i have begin to live as a separate self as an ego who i am not and because of that false identity i forget who i truly am so i have abandoned my truth as if giving the uh, you know ego partnering the ego in the crime you know, partnering its uh, or perpetuating the sense of ego so outer abandonment if i am getting more and more outer abandonment in the world it is how is it a reflection of my inner state that i have abandoned who i truly am and once i come back home to my own self own myself fully who i truly am get in touch with that space it is not a possibility that the outer situations show me that world is a non caring uncaring place and no one can love you here and you know all of that so it really is one it it's not even interconnected it's just one there is just this oneness and that's why we were talking last time that the universe conspires to tell you through hints and ideas and clues and all the rejections and insults in that we get in our life that you have to come back to yourself you have forgotten who you truly are right so it's just a vast conspiracy almost one can say going on to put us back to who uh, to what we really deserve you know we we actually deserve that peace and oneness which is our true nature which we try to find out in the outside world thinking that i am this body and this body needs to be loved but once i realize who i truly am there would be no one really you know uh, caring much about uh, what i get or not get from the outer situations and that is how a progress is made you know layers of ignorance of who i think myself to be are shed so that is the progress that is made shedding of layers and layers of ignorance yeah and then in this part you know where alok da is sharing we see this in our human relationships that a person will have one kind of a relationship with one fellow the same person will have a different kind of a relationship with different fellow now i also reflected about this in the terms of that you know imagine that there is a person in your life to whom whenever you meet there is a lot of expectation and demands that automatically arise when he or she is there so with that person you will have a different kind of a relationship now there are also many many fellows in our kind of you know in proximity with whom we don't have that expectation demand relationship with whom we have a very you know kind of a more distant and yet a heartful relationship 
so there in the absence of expectations and demands there would be a different kind of a truth operating in the beam so this is how we see that you know it's just mirroring if i am expecting from a person that if you agree to my demands only then it will bring me happiness it is a 2000% surety that that person will forever disappoint us why because in expecting my happiness to be received from outer means i am abandoning my truth where happiness and peace are my 24/7 true nature so the universe will try to tell me by rejections and slaps on my face that babe you know get back on your track you know you are not this begging bowl that you carry you are uh, full and content get in touch with that space so this is how world becomes like a mirror and then as you were sharing that divine service is ev- can be everywhere you know i often think about you know going to the social media many a times many people are more in limelight you know who may be doing really uh, nice work in their lives but many many are silent warriors you know they they in their own life they are manifesting divine truth in simple simple ways little little ways their stories don't get published but that does not mean that uh, that divine truth is not being manifested out so this simple simple uh, you know uh, living simple living and kind of a deeper understanding of life can be manifested out in many many infinite possible of ver- varieties of ways not everyone becomes a leader not everyone becomes a you know guru or a spiritual master and yet for your for your own uh, you know kind of family relationships you are a beacon of light you know or for your own self for your own children you are a beacon of light so just that is enough one does not need only to be published in order to know that one is you know living a divine truth one there is a more and more a feeling of contentment and peace in the being you know and also along with that progress is there it is not possible that with peace and contentment progress is absent because that would be inertia right and inertia uh, that is a different thing we will not go there yeah we may come to that later on regarding conflict yes and this is really so beautiful as taru was also sharing taking the name of uh, something which is more sublime and ethereal just uh, changes the atmosphere of you know the whole even the mind for example somebody say my mother mother in law had this habit of saying you know jai sai baba she was a sai baba devotee and uh, whenever we will be going out she would say this words and something will change within the being you know she has just said these two words nothing she has said anything else apart from that but the moment she would say jai sai baba something internally would also get transformed get more peaceful and you know more settled out so so called so yes it 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 is very very powerful and as alok da was sharing that it's not just taking mother's name humko lagta hai ki naam mein kya rakha hai you know ki you know but if we take the name of some person who is manifesting evil uh, we will see that how badly it affects us so just like that if we have uh, uh, these avatars in our life whose name transforms right uh, i think we must be uh, kind of implementing it more and more in our life because we we anyway are thinking about so many things right some a constant story is going on in my head right that is constantly going on in my head me and my story me and my story and that is the result that i suffer i emotionally suffer i am in emotional pain and suffering so if that kind of a mental chatter can lead me to this trouble and suffering in life then reversing that mental chatter and taking a name of more sublime personalities or the avatars can definitely would definitely have this effect on my consciousness shedding away the layers of ignorance so this actually is very very powerful it may look very little but usually face values deceive so it it can be only you know only those people who have actually Uh, seen its power in their life as taru was sharing and and many of you may have felt experientially in their own life you know that just taking the name 
settles you down brings peace and clarity and then whatever action has to be taken will be coming from that peace and clarity and this itself becomes divine service so one cannot say that the divine service happens only when talks are happening or people are you know having dialoguing or maybe working in an ashram or you know putting flowers on mother savadi that obviously is service but those people who are not exactly at the physical proximity of mother and shri aurobindo or even other uh, you know guides and masters uh, any place wherever you are because we are not limited by physical uh, body you know we think that we are physical body but we are not so we are not limited by the limits of the body and that's why wherever we are whatever we are thinking if it is a vicious loop of thinking that will have its effect and if it's the name of the divine that will also have its effect whatever nurture you know for example we give to our minds that is the quality of our mind it becomes almost like a sponge mind is like a sponge if i keep it in dirty water it gets dirty it get really smelly so if my life is smelly then definitely i have been keeping my mind in dirty waters thoughts which are not really serving me well and this i found really very intriguing and interesting uh, and very powerful you know mother had come with a different plan different power she was armed with love you know so beautiful armed with love you know usually we talk about tools and instruments of all kind and manipulations when we talk about our armaments right as if we are trying to defend something but the power of love is in its vulnerability you know love is so powerful and yet it is so vulnerable and then we were also talking about suppleness and plasticity and flexibility you know only love has this transforming effect and that is why you know many people uh, no would not even say many things you know for example anandmayi ma you know just her presence her loving presence will will change people we have so so many examples where just in presence of a person who is exuding out love consciousness undergoes a change and how do you feel it that when you leave that place when you leave that presence you ha- it has its residual effect but can you also have some fragrant memories but then it fades in time because the other external situations will have then more exerting power right and that is why we talk about sat sangat because if bad sangat can have its effect then sat sangat also can it will have its powerful effects yeah and as uh, taru also already shared you know talking about how rigid people can get regarding these dogmas ideas and philosophies even i have uh, encountered you know many institutions uh, in my these trips to these different different places i went to you know where uh, almost one feels like a repulsion uh, that what have you really made out of you know for example buddha's teachings what have you really made distorted uh, krishna murti's teaching into whatever suits your ego and that the, people then can live in this false belief that i am serving divinity or spirituality but then one is just in ignorance serving one's own ego and rigidity you know, so that can actually become a big big trap you know one can again bear it on a like a uh, almost a medal on one's shirt that i am a part of this and this institution and i am the ceo and founder or maybe a volunteer at this organization and that you know that gives a pride to your ego so one has to be very sensitive to these little little movements inside one's being if one is you know, wants to walk this path of truth and also this was so powerful every relationship can be a means to serve the divine even the difficult ones and not really saying that if there are abusive relationships one has to stay there not not like that uh, you know if there are abusive relationships what happens there is that we find the strength to finally take a stand for ourselves so that is the divine service you know if, if i find the strength to say no 
you know that enough of abuse is done i have tried many things and it's not working and it's time for me to take a stand for myself so that is how we serve the divine truth so not that i have to just maintain myself in a difficult relationship but whatever happens either this way or that way i will be growing closer to my truth i will be given more and more strength to stand up for my own being for my own right that is how uh, one kind of a relationship can be a service to the divine and if any in any relationship we can bring a drop you know look at this a drop just a drop you know almost reminds me of these essential oils you know just a drop is enough and just like that imagine that there is a glass full of potable drinking water if you put a drop of dirty water it it becomes in you know you cannot drink it right so it's almost a similar kind of a power that is also there in hostility but love then ultimately forever love has a greater understanding and that is why love wins all the time you know love brings more harmony even when there is discord you know uh, while discord by itself cannot sort itself out and that is why we say ki ant mein satya ki jeet hoti hai why because everything is a manifestation of truth and that is why uh, undivine or hostility is a falsehood that one perpetuates and once we know that it's a falsehood that we are perpetuating only love exists nothing else exists right in its own right for it, it's almost like saying imagine that there is an ocean you know the ocean exists but the wave comes and goes so falsehood is almost like that falsehood will come and go but what will remain is the ocean the ocean of our own true nature that will always win if we stay till the end so a drop of true understanding trust peace and it would just be a very very simple thing that a person is in a bad mood and what you did it you did not react to the to the bad mood simple you didn't really do much but you did not react according to the bad mood in which any message got conveyed you just maybe stayed silent or whatever you know kind of did whatever you had to do and you will see that in we, we all have experiences i'm sure with that and we see that in moments that uh, bitterness fades away why because you did not perpetuate it by reacting according to what person's mood was uh, you know kind of reflecting आपने उसको कोई सत्ता ही नहीं दी उसको कोई प्रायोरिटी ही नहीं दी आपने एज इफ यू जस्ट इग्नोर्ड दैट बैड मूड एंड यू डिड वॉट एवर वॉज राइट इन दैट मोमेंट एंड दैट जस्ट डिसिपेट्स इवन द अदर पर्सन गेट्स अ हिंट यू नो दैट वॉट एवर गॉड डन वॉज रियली रिक्वायर्ड एंड दिस इज हाउ वी हेल्प इच अदर टू ग्रो गॉड वर्ड एंड गॉड वेन वी से गॉड वर्ड इट इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टूवर्ड्स अवर ओन true self our own true being and no one can be happy being separated from our god godly character you know we if i can say call it a character you know no one can be really happy if one is away from his own truth and uh, once we have this little drop of understanding one is helping each other on the path so can there be any service greater than that you know in little little moments of life you take great care of how can i serve the divine how can i serve the truth by choosing harmony over discord by choosing silence over arguments maybe at times maybe by choosing taking a stand in, instead of getting suppressed because that is also standing for truth you know so it again infinite possibilities one cannot put it into a formula right because many a times Uh, taking up a sword is necessary because that is what truth is and many a times pe- keeping the sword and remaining silent is necessary so what exactly is needed will be dependent on the context to context you know kind of dependency of the situation yeah so anything so far or shall i continue Uh, just unmute and share if i'm maybe i'm going too fast whenever just unmute and share don't hesitate uh, that you maybe 
interrupt it's not an interruption it's always an addition so feel free to share yeah so august 2 1913 this morning as i was glancing over the month that is beginning and wondering how i could serve thee better now this is again alukda is also reflected on this this is so beautiful because instead of asking for her own selfish motives and you know what what will serve my body my family you know my relationships uh, what will serve my bank balance or whatever uski jagah kya bola ja raha hai how could i serve thee better what can i do more so that i serve the divine truth better this is uh, what we call as an aspiration right a willingness to serve the divine truth yeah and then she hears the lord's response as we were reading in savitri that whenever there is a call from below there is a direct descent as if the birds a bird with mighty wings flows down and gives that response i heard the small voice within like a murmur in the silence now two things are important here one thing is a murmur and second is the silence the divine voice since it is very soft and gentle like cool breeze as you we were hearing in the last prayer it is not a very uh, loud voice so silence and calm then becomes almost a prerequisite to be able to hear divine voice now if we have to fine tune our finite being to infinity what is needed is this calm and quietude within the being and how can calm and quietude come to us they will not come to us if i am running after the desires and ambitions of the ego that will always make me more and more restless kuch hai jo mujhe milega you know something or the other i will get from external situations so as long as i have faith and belief that something or the other will come from external situations i will not be able to have quietude in the being quietude in the being is a result or a side effect of understanding that nothing externally can bring me peace and happiness so i am responsible for that and in effect quietude dawns and when this quietude dawns i am more and more able to fine tune my uh, kind of hearing capacity or listening or understanding capacity to whatever the truth is being said in without any words to me within the being so quietude cannot come as a result of this situation getting better externally and then i will have this quietude quietude is the first and why it is the first uh, because it is a side effect of an understanding that nothing on this earth or this planet or in this whole manifestation can bring me peace and happiness only then quietude can be there and then we hear this voice so divine voice is always soft gentle it doesn't force us even though in that soft voice there is this compulsion you know why compulsion it almost like you know it's a very uh, compelling voice you know a truth is compelling in nature so something stays with us it may be if for example remember hearing a uh, a word of truth and light and full of sublime presence maybe somewhere in a talk or somebody maybe said you something a long years back it stays with you so that is the compulsion that is uh, almost that character that it has that it is not very loud it is very gentle but it also does not leave you why it doesn't leave us because truth is our nature too so somewhere like a magnet it attracts us i don't know why it stayed with me but it stayed with me so like a magnet it stays with us this compulsion this divine voice of truth and it never leaves the one who has heard it and again referring to the previous prayer that we took also in our prayers and meditations june 27 1913 thy voice is so modest impartial so it would neither take preference of this person who is praying or of the rest of the world 
impartial it is not based on preferences if we want to hear this voice we have to be really without preferences you know so this is what we read full of mercy and divine compassion why full of mercy because we know the divine knows very well that the wave of tendencies that the flow and momentum of past tendencies is very very strong it is an overpowering grip over our being and that is why it will not say ki jaldi kar lo jaldi kar lo it will say okay i am with you take your time but stay at it be with it so it's like almost a compassion compassionate voice of a parent you know uh, i think uh, if we are lucky to have parents who are very compassionate and usually parents are at least compassionate to their own children usually i'm not saying virtually everywhere but you know they have this tremendous capacity owing to that this is your own child you know this again coming out of mamta but yet we refer to our children as our own children and for them we feel that they are our extension right so there we have extreme compassion if a child is not able to learn in one day we stay with him one day two day three day even a year passes by and we are still with the child right so this is the compassion of the divine mother or you know the divine itself uh, who has given birth to all of us children and it is full of mercy and kindness not in a hurry because it knows it understands the difficulties also on the way it does not make itself heard with any authority and it's almost like sheetal you know as we were reading last time cool soft and pure breeze it almost cools you down that not to worry everything will be done not to worry stay stick to the path everything will be done kabir says dheere dheere re mana dheere sab kuch hoye mali siche so ghada ritu aaye phal hoye so this is perseverance you know. mother says on spiritual path perseverance is the first uh, and amongst other you know the qualities that are needed on this path yeah and then this murmur that imparts a note of harmony to a discordant concert yeah and you i think we already discussed these uh, little pointers harmony unity peace light sense of ease you know all this is divine in nature and all that needs to division discord disorder confusion darkness is coming from the undivine now when we say coming from the undivine it does not mean that there is anything in existence apart from the divinity it just means that when the divinity in something is veiled then it is called an asura asura also is originating from the same divine truth poor fellow it is also wanting peace and happiness but the difference is that it is forgotten its true nature we all you know uh, i think sri aurobindo says at one point that man is born a asura and then he has to kind of you know grow godward so we are all born in ignorance and the journey the adventure of life is finding ourselves out through the veils of ignorance shedding them one by one by one by one finding our truth and then acting out from that truth in our life rather than from the sense of being a separate self this is our journey so when it is said undivine we should not think that there is anything else that exists like we have this division of gods and the asuras you know it seems like there are two different parties so when we talk about undivine the undivine element is coming from divine only but it is veiled in consciousness the consciousness is not yet ripe enough to shed its light onto itself that is what we refer to as undivine yeah yes and then mother continues and this is the uh, this is what the voice said to the mother this is what it said to me see how very little all outer circumstances matter you know we have enough experiences of people's inspirational lives all of all around we keep on hearing reading you know in our own 
proximities there may be people who have turned so called difficult situations into something which uh, almost like a stepping stone in their evolution so what matters is the attitude in which i take any life situation no outer circumstance can matter because each outer circumstance will give me strength to take more and more of a stand as my truth the more difficult the situation gets i get more and more strength to work for truth to be my truth to act out speak out my truth and if this can be the case then anywhere i go anywhere doesn't matter where i go i may be in a jail no i may be in a prison i may be in worst possible uh, place on this earth and yet i will be doing divine service i'll be challenging myself to come out of my comfort zones and then serve the truth in whatever form is feasible there so see how very little all our outer circumstances matter now this should also come to us on this line that many a times we are waiting for people in our life to change no kab iska thoda sa direction theek hogi meri taraf to shayad kuch change ho life mein no kab is bande ki life mein change aayega to main apni life sudharungi you know we keep on waiting waiting and that wait is so painful because in that wait we are suffering and no one likes to suffer suffering is not our nature so this is how we can begin this is where we can gather strength from that no matter what the external situation is i am going to stick to my truth i am going to follow what truth asks me to follow and again the hinters are harmony unity you know peace sense of ease lightness so can we begin can we begin with these baby steps and now stop to wait for the outer circumstances to change and when i say outer circumstances it will also mean my body because i am not my body my body is also something outer right so i cannot say that when the disease will end then i will come to truth abhi to bahut pareshani hai right so not to use any situation as an excuse to delay living for truth or and that would be living for my own self you know my own truth yeah. see how very little all outer circumstances matter why strive and strain so to realize thy own conception of truth kyunki okay, agar maine soch liya ki agar ye nahi hoga to mujhe shanti nahi milegi to bas ab to main ashanti rahunga or the mood would be bad or whatever so now the moment we take this step that i am not making any outer situation dependent or responsible for my peace and happiness look at the power we receive in that moment we become responsible for our own being and then we also are very supple that no matter whatever turns out in external situation that that will be taken care of you know action will come accordingly you know, right action will come so that brings us to suppleness and flexibility suppleness you know even the word suppleness is so relaxing in nature supple flexible plasticity plasticity is coming from this word you know um, when we talk about neural plasticity right that every time uh, we try to learn a new skill or go to a new environment or try to learn something new new neurons are developing and connections are forming so new connections you know expansion vastness plasticity suppleness vastness wideness they all go together because we cannot be wide be without being plastic kahin na kahin jaake fir se boundary bana lenge so plasticity is a prerequisite for vastness and wideness which is our own true nature no one likes to be in limits so why to strain why to push our own agendas we may have thought something but if that did not happen whatever happened will be seen you know uh, i'll i'll find out even something interesting through those 
whatever happened those situations and actually only then life becomes an unfolding or an adventure otherwise if i only want in external situations my conception of truth to be followed it will actually be leading to more monotone you know but when we become more open to receive and to see also what is happening apart from my own point of views i think that expands us really expands us yeah and then one sees that truth is divine truth means infinite possibilities by definition the divine is infinite so how can i be you know trapping the divine in only one particular viewpoint and we also see that it is so exhausting you know those of us who may have tried this in our lives i think virtually all of us try this to do exactly how i want to do in this home or you know the whatever the interior decoration or whatever is happening you know raising up a child what i want to do and it is so exhausting and draining and by exhausting and draining we should be actually getting a signal that i am actually taking a road which i can actually let go you know, i don't have to take that road because whatever is exhausting and draining in nature uh, it's not coming out of truth so that is another signal be more supple more trusting why trusting because whatever will happen will show me something more about the whole manifestation more maybe may expand my understanding may sh- show me something new suppleness is a quality which is indispensable for supramental yoga you know because as taru was sharing earlier that you know we we reach the truth because truth is not anything objective you know truth is not a laptop that i can say okay these are the dimensions and this is how truth looks so we can never uh, limit truth in our own conceptions truth can be arrived at in different situations by again neti neti not this not this that which is heavy cannot be truth that which is leading to more discord and more disharmony cannot be truth so neti neti karte hue hum truth ki taraf aate hain aate rehte hain aate rehte hain aate rehte hain why because truth is infinite you know one can never reach truth so almost like that one can never reach i can only reach something which is objective in nature you know there is this place called bombay a physical place called bombay and i can reach to bombay right it's very easy but that which not is there in any form but the basis of all forms how can you reach that right and that is why we also say that we can reflect upon truth we can contemplate upon truth but we will never be able to exactly uh, you know confine or define truth and that is why these negations then become necessary which come from advaitic you know vedantic traditions you know that it can be said only in negation because i see my thought i am not my thought because i see my body and feeling and sense perceptions i am not that right so this is again you know going in that direction so the only duty here for all each one of us is not to let oneself troubled by anything and i would reiterate it is not possible for a ego to not to be troubled ego always finds reasons to be troubled because that uh, almost perpetuates its sense of separate self when i now am learning that nothing externally can give me peace and happiness then i see that i am the one responsible and then i need not be actually troubled by anything this is how uh, we reach to this place of equanimity or peace and clarity otherwise if we say to an ego that your duty is not to let yourself troubled by anything it will say wow you know how can you even say this so many things are happening how can you say that i should i should not be troubled by anything you know look at that person look at this person look at this situation so ego the sense of ego that we have it will just find ways and ways in which more discord can be generated how can i remain troubled that is the story of ego how to find little little uh, kind of mountains out of molehills 
and make it into my trouble because in absence of the story ego is not so it has to almost a compulsion it is a compulsion to perpetuate its story otherwise who am i who am i if i am not the story if there is no complaints in my story if there is no drama in my story who am i you know and that that emptiness uh, scares ego that emptiness or the silence is annihilation for the ego so that's very interesting that yeah yes that is how we enter into peace grace and poise in a poise or you know a quietude and this is not the ending uh, as sri aurobindo and mother say nirvana is not the ending of life it is beginning of a life divine we have been waiting to live uh, this life in our lives manifesting out truth in our life in our actions in our words in our behaviors more and more and more and more and more and more why because there is no end to this progression because the layers of ignorance are so dark and so uh, thick that no matter how long we go on this path something or the other will still be there uh, which makes us progress further 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 like that to torment oneself about doing the right thing causes as much harm as a bad will again you know uh, having rigid ideas about how things are to be done in life and exhausting yourself going to that you know there are so many stories of especially homemakers you know uh, females who are investing exhausting themselves in the caretaking of the house you know as if they feel that there is no other option they as if uh, no other path is possible and they f- even fail to read the signal of exhaustion that this is not the way i must be going otherwise why is there so much of exhaustion in life we don't even bother to look at it we spend years in dusting our houses but we don't even spend uh, a few hours in taking care of the dust that has been there for for such long within us yeah taru you have something to share i didn't know if you were had stopped for that this example that you have used i think it's really excellent about the homemakers because you know i have felt that because in this profession if i may call it that because there's nothing materialistic coming you know it's just maintenance and kind of taking care of things and when one is not even able to do that it's really it has the tendency to frustrate people you know ki mm. it's like somehow considered quite less right kyunki itna bhi nahi kar pa rahe ho ki this is so it's really interesting the dynamic that how you are kind of giving your whole day your whole life to something day and night from morning you know food and like you're saying dusting and cooking still it's not considered in high regard because that is like the basic stuff that you can do it doesn't require any like technical education and stuff so there's no status there's no of course earning and stuff and when i am not even able to do that Mm-hmm. it like kind of you know it's like a i've seen it like a chain kind of a reaction you know cash 22 get the more you feel bad the less you do and then it just starts like that so yeah that's why right. and yeah. it's like you know abhi aap jo whatever you are saying and sharing the fact that things have the possibility of being so simple like mm-hmm. you know we talk about so many responsibilities and duties as a citizen as a child as a mother as a father and how mother just says that your only duty is to you know kind of protect your own peace mm. so that kind of it's like it makes one wonder ki how did we come that far you know like mm. and still it takes a long time to go back but it's mm. like whole dynamics of it ki how we all want simplicity right like if you ask somebody nobody wants complicated and mm. yet it's so far from that and obviously we have to go back to it but the whole dynamics i felt was very interesting yeah. going through it thank you yeah. 
and that's why mother told no even at a young age she told she had a dream then to start a community like that which will take to, i mean take care of all the uh, basic community yes. and uh, uh, not to concentrate in always doing all this <laughs> routine works yeah 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 so, Yes. So, coming on to conflict, you know, uh, as we were sharing earlier, that a conflict seems like a negative word, right? I don't want to have conflict in my life, you know. but conflict, you know, uh, having conflicts in relationships, especially, uh, two things can happen. Uh, either two people going through a conflict. dissociate or separate because there there are not they are not reaching a level of understanding the other thing that happens which is really so beautiful uh, is that conflict takes us to a deeper understanding of each other as if it it bonds us in a way if i can use this word it kind of connects us in a way which is beyond words and uh, speeches and talks and arguments so again whatever will happen will happen according to the context uh, we are operating from for but uh, two things can happen i have seen that either it takes you to a deeper understanding uh, within yourself and indirectly of the other person also because it is all connected it is one so the love deepens or the understanding deepens the care deepens for each other or uh, when we are not able to reach an understanding one separates right one kind of calls it a day for the relationship that may happen or not so i think uh, that's what i found interesting also that here um i think here yes why does divine allow this conflict uh, shri aurobindo puts in savitri conflict fathers our universe through his universe is born new creation is born through conflict and clash of forces we end up arriving at a greater higher harmony this is what i was stressing at we end up arriving at a higher harmony you know usually in our relationships we are very uh, sensitive our usual relationships are based on a lot of falsehood you know pampering each other's ego and that is why we keep a lot of distance from each other in the sense that we feel that agar maine ye keh diya to kahi banda pareshan to nahi ho jayega you know all that so as if we are massaging each other's ego so that there is no discord or conflict in relationships but the beauty the beauty is exactly superficial harmony the beauty is that once we begin to talk out truth in our life in those relationships if we are willing obviously and if there is a capacity from other side also to listen to that we see that it takes us to a deeper 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 harmony which is not a superficial harmony you know as if so far in these years we have been just massaging each other's comfort zones and whenever we are in comfort zones we are far 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 away from truth so if i am actually taking care of others people's comfort zones emotionally mentally i am actually partnering in crime to keep them away from their truth and if i dare to discuss truth with them whenever i find an opportunity one will see that something or the other will be conveyed in that relationship to the other person or to you where it touches the being and something changes we we may not directly get to know what changed but something will change because truth owing to the fact that it is one it is the same in that person also no matter if the other person may not admit it at that point of time owing to the resistance of the ego but something really deep will be conveyed you know, which will be undeniable so that that is how we end up arriving at a higher harmony so it is good to go through conflicts it is good to go through discords you know two things again as i have shared two times that two things happen either you part your ways or you end up in a greater harmony whatever way truth works
Yeah. And this also reminds me of, uh, you know, this Kabir couplet I had taken a few days ago. Uh, Ram snehi jo mile, dono varan gamai. So if two people are really coming out of truth or they have an inclination to go towards truth, they will not care to drop their preferences, likes and dislikes in order for truth to prevail. You know, he says, Kabir, the, the nature of Haldi is yellow and the nature of Chuna is white. But when both of these meet, they will not even care for a moment whether I have to lose my own, the color that I th thought to be my own or not. So one would not care in that kind of a relationship which is based out of truth, whether I have to leave my preferences or not in order for truth and harmony to prevail. And that will be an auspicious giving up or a sacrifice of your preferences. Yeah. Only in a calm as of deep waters can be found the possibility of true service. So again, dipping ourselves in the calm of the being, in the, in the poise and the depth of the being is an urgency almost for each one of us. And that is how we create a world which is a world which is full of harmony and not discord, right? Not full of uh, eating up each other for the sake of love, right? Uh, or for the sake of ambition or greed or whatever. Only then we will be serving truth. Only in a calm as of deep waters. And in one of the prayers we had read earlier, Mother shared that if on the surface of an ocean there is a lot of turbulence, what I do is I delve deep in the, in the being. And there forever there is calm. So this is what we have to do. You know, whenever we are trying to connect dots in our personal lives, and we are not really finding a clue to what happened and what did not happen. You need not waste so much of energy there. Just plunge deep into the depths of the being. And peace, happiness and contentment are 24-7 at our service there. That is what our true nature is. Hmm? Yeah. And when we are not acting out of calm, we are serving the untruth or the undivine, which is the ego. right? Which is not, which is... It seems like it exists, but it exists not. The only thing that exists is truth. That which is. Rest all is falsehood. If we are not calm, we may think that we are serving the divine, but we will be serving falsehood, ego. And this reply that mother hears, this reply was so luminous and pure. It carried within itself such a striking reality that the state it described was communicated without any difficulty. You know, look at this. As if, as if a flow happened from the inner being to the outer. You know, the truth, the luminosity, the purity was conveyed without any difficulty that yes, this is so. Pure perception, pure knowing, pure direct knowing. You know, this is what we call whenever moments of truth are felt in our life, one just knows. You know, there is no logic to it. There is no reason one can put to it. One just knows that it is so. So this is how mother gets to know about this. That this state was communicated to me without any difficulty. And again, if we take one step towards our truth, the other step, the strength for the other step is given to us. And just almost like doing a gymming, you know. We go one day and second day we get the power to go again and then we are strengthening the muscles to run faster, you know, to, to maybe do more exercise. So one step taken in right direction gives you strength to move towards in the right direction further more. And one step taken in a wrong direction, and by wrong I mean the falsehood, the sense of separate me, uh, weakens us. So weakness, if I am feeling drained and weak in my life, definitely I am serving more of my ego that can be taken as a signal it seemed to me i was floating in the calm of deep waters you know this is something which has to be felt for oneself 
otherwise it just remains a theory you know all of us may have or may not have uh, i am assuming may have touched this calm of deep waters you know, floating in the calm of deep waters when external chaos is actually too much and you just lose all the hope and energy and no matter whatever is going externally now you plunge deep into the being and there you see that yes there is rest peace and stillness i understood i saw clearly what the best attitude would be and now i only have to ask the o sublime master my supreme teacher to give me the strength and clear sightedness i need to remain constantly in this state now i also wondered on these lines that why would mother want to stick to this state right and in other prayers uh, mother has actually shared that i think we have already covered a couple of those prayers where mother has shared that if you want me to go through darkness let me go through darkness so i think it's context to context in this context uh, a prayer is rising up from the being that in order to serve truth i need to remain in calm and hence give me the clear sightedness and strength so that i remain in this calm and certitude and yet at other places mother has also shared that if you think that for your work darkness is necessary let me go through the darkness so you know it's like i just wanted to put it forward because it in, intrigued me as well this line that uh, why would mother want to attach to one state and you know uh, want one kind of a divine certitude Yes. So, anything? Do not torment thyself, child. Now, mother is uh, that that higher voice is speaking to the mother. Do not torment thyself, child. Silence, peace. peace you know and this power of calling peace uh, we think that our restlessness of the vital or mental struggle will come to an end one day when all the situations will work according to me and that one day never comes and forever we live a life in strife and conflict so can we now choose to bring peace to that restlessness that is there in our lives direct peace you know see i think this can be also talked about in this way that if for example there is a lot of restlessness in the being the ego is wanting the mind is wanting that let this situation be fixed and then i will have peace so ultimately what it wants is peace only the mind wants peace the vital wants peace why because they are originating from peace and stillness that is their true nature now can we without any mediator of a circumstance or a person or a spouse or a child without any mediator without anything turning into my favor can i directly bring it to its source which is peace is that a possibility i think that is a possibility and that is the possibility because if i keep on waiting for external things to change and we have seen that even external things change one thing or the other pops up which says oh this is not right now this needs to change now this needs to change and forever one is in a trap of non peace and non stillness and non calm so what is most important for me in this life right now right now as i as i see myself if peace has become my priority i must feed the child of my being peace directly in the mouth and not wait for external situation to change and then waiting for peace to happen because then that will be only a temporary peace a peace so called given it is not given but so called given by an external situation can always be taken away that can be a guarantee you know that will be a surety right so and that makes us really truly sashakt you know very powerful and a powerful in a benevolent way because we will not be abusing this power for any uh, wrong purposes it is not a possibility yeah 
So I think I'm done. If you have anything to share, uh, please do. Else we'll go through the prayer. Okay. So, Shreya, would you like to read the prayer? Sure. This morning, as I was glancing over the month that is beginning and wondering how I could serve thee better, I heard this small voice within like a murmur in the silence. And this is what it said to me. See how very little all outer circumstances matter. Why strive and strain so to realize thy own conception of truth? Be more supple, more trusting. The only duty is not to let oneself be troubled by anything. To torment oneself about doing the right thing causes as much harm as a bad will. Only in a calm as of deep waters can be found the possibility of true service. And this reply was so luminous and pure, it carried within itself such a striking reality that the state it described was communicated without any difficulty. It seemed to me I was floating in the calm of deep waters I understood, I saw clearly what the best attitude would be, and now I have only to ask Thee, O Sublime Master, my Supreme Teacher, to give me the strength and clear-sightedness I need to remain constantly in this state. Do not torment thyself, child. Silence, peace, peace. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.